Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Trend. You are watching Sports Talk. Uh, today, we have a very special program. As you know, uh, we just did a program with Cricket Canada for the return to play guidelines. And today, we are talking to Cricket Ontario about the guidelines of return to play. And we have a very heavy duty panel tonight, uh, starting from Mr. Uh, Shah Zafar, the president of Cricket Ontario. We have Mr. Prem Prashad, president of uh, uh, Brampton Etobicoke District Cricket League. Uh, Mr. Munjeet Chaudhary, president of uh, Hamilton Cricket League. Uh, Farhan Khan, vice president, TDCA, Toronto District and Cricket Association. We have Mike Ma Mayank Sharma, the Ottawa Valley Cricket Council. And we have more people. We'll introduce you in a minute. So everybody, welcome to the program. Thank you, uh, thank for, you for, for having us uh, into the program and uh, thank you for conducting this uh, second part of the regional update on in Ontario, uh, Cricket Ontario, and give us, the, give us the opportunity and our members opportunity to share their updates on the what is happening with COVID-19 situation. And as you know, uh, things are um, restriction, relaxing a little bit and uh, so I'm very sure that the uh, everybody has a lot to say about how the how the things going to come along in the future. Uh, great is I know it's going to be lots of questions people are asking re regarding the play. So why don't we just start with like you know the the top of the line uh, return to play guideline which you guys uh, you know produce and a lot of people are you know following that guideline. Um, I will start because I think most of the updates will be coming from the region, so I'm not going to take too much of a time to go over and detail out that how the uh, uh, things will be handled as we go along. But as a Cricket Ontario uh, perspective, we have worked hard and, uh, and uh, our committee has actually worked hard into developing these guidelines. And these guidelines basically based on safety first, right? Safety first means that social, we have emphasized on the social distance, the no close gathering, uh, use of the face mask, handling, uh, handling the washing the hand with sanitizer and stuff like that when poss possible, and avoiding the uh, the face and nose and touch like this, and covering mouth with, uh, with the, you know, while you're coughing and stuff like this. So always a player safety and umpire safety and people involved in the activity outside is number one. So that guideline is available on cricketontario.ca website. Along with the guideline, we have um, uh, all the different, you know, um, uh, guidelines that we receive from Cricket Canada, Cricket Australia, Cricket England, and ICC are also available in our uh, section. That's called the uh, menu, which is called the COVID-19. And we have a couple of waiver forms. If somebody is looking for, we really act so cautious to make sure people don't participate when they have symptoms or something like this, then they have to sign those waiver forms. So everything is from resource perspective, we are ready. We are just waiting for the proper time to get going. And I will give the forum to the uh, members to speak on what their timeline and how they are preparing them to. Okay. Uh, so I think one of our participants had their. Uh, Either the stream is on or their speaker is on. So please check. We're going to be getting a lot of feedback. For that. So everybody can, or, or somebody who is not speaking, just turn off your mic. So uh, with that, like, you know, like, the, so uh, ICC made a return to, poly, a return to play guideline and then Cricket Canada on the same guidelines created their, their guideline. And now the, each province will be, uh, generating or creating their guidelines, Ontario already did, right? So, but it's like the main part is for the leagues and regions, right? To uh, to implement that. I think the what, what uh, kind of a... yeah, go ahead. I think the guideline is the guideline for all the regions to look at this guideline and adopt it. And obviously, as you know, that different municipalities have different restrictions and different safety. Uh, you know the restrictions on the on the on the play field. So each, I'm pretty sure that each member will take the guideline that we have produced, very extensive. Uh, the Cricket Canada guideline, ICC guideline, and other other countries' guidelines are the guideline which is basically giving the direction that what you have to do to be ready to start a play. Our guideline basically has that when you go onto the field, 
what precautions you have to take to make sure that you're safe and your buddies are safe when they're playing. So we are more details, a little bit more. And these guidelines are given to all the members and then the members will adopt those guidelines. And obviously they're gonna implement the best way they can do that. So I think it is the best question to ask with these members and see that what they're doing with the guidelines. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll start like question, as the question will come, we'll ask like we start with the TND. Uh, to Farhan Bhai. Uh, Farhan, welcome yes, to the sir. program. And the question is, I know like it's just mainly on the city level, you have any news on return to play or date or anything like that? Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Farhan Bhai. Um, unfortunately, no, uh, not from the city perspective. As you know, um, we are following the guidelines, rather the direction from the city, uh, which is direct under direct administration of the province. Um, as we all know that uh, the two-stage or two-phase program are kicked off by the premier, um, GTA or, or the you know Golden Horseshoe area is not included in that. So we suspect that if at all, Toronto may be the last one, along with, uh, for example, Peel region and York region, just because of the density of population in these areas. But uh, no direction from them. Um, we have been hearing other news like, uh, you know, gyms have been told to get ready and so on and so forth. But again, these are, uh, I, I cannot verify them at any level. So I think we'll just have to wait and see. Great. Um, Prem, Brampton, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a really hard spot right now. How things look for you? And then basically, we just very briefly, how things are looking for you guys? Your mic is off. Prem, your mic is off. You guys or me? Uh, you can, that, that's okay. Go ahead. Now yeah. we can hear you. Yeah. Um, uh, as you know, um, yeah, uh, my our mayor gives his daily um, report on uh, the situation of COVID. And as you know, he himself and the mayor of Mississauga are very, very strict. They will not open just because some other other cities open up until they're sure that the hotspots and the, the, the increase in cases have, have come down to a respectable uh, number. Parks were op was open because it was part of stage two and they have, but they've put out their videos clarifying that the opening of parks completely excludes all sports facilities. So none of the sports facilities are open. Um, we do not have definitive date from the city as to when they may be open as everybody has july uh, waiting july 11 but it's a date in the sun i've spoken to the city allocation people i've spoken to the the, the the director and manager of parks and recs that prepares all of our facilities they are continuing to keep the facilities in a state of readiness because if you go around brampton you will see the cricket fields are clipped. They look luscious. They look inviting. They look like you're ready for play. But they're not clipping it to the half an inch. They're clipping it higher just for now. Um, we, right now, we have our, uh, all the things that was promised in 2020 are held back because of COVID. Our city usually have 110 staff. They have 25. They're using contractors to get stuff done. The good news for us is that two of our facilities have got the turf wickets in them. So we're looking forward to when they say return to play. Our players, yep. are, our players are excited, but we have distributed the guidelines that we have built in for Cricket Ontario to everyone. It's on our website. We will be having a virtual meeting with our membership on the 22nd to update them about the COVID and about reopening and about the guidelines and what they have to do. Okay, great. Great, Prem. Thank you for your answer. Okay, there's one, just one uh, disclaimer uh, for every viewer, viewers that like this is a, uh, uh, there is a very good chance right now to ask your question about, you know, how things will be happening. We had the last program with Cricket Canada and people were asking very specific questions regarding the leagues and their clubs. So today is your chance to ask. And then the one thing is when you ask a specific question, please mention the league name, like which league you're referring. Because uh, even though the province or region level, level have their guidelines, each league will have their own uh, small guidelines too. So please uh, mention which... Uh, so, Ranjit Bhai, there, there's the question. I'm going to throw it to you. Like, is the league going to start or no? From Mandeep Singh. 
uh, yeah, no, actually, you know, just like everybody else said, uh, first and foremost, the safety uh, of our players and the community is forefront. Uh, yes, we know as cricketers how hard it is to stay off the fields, uh, especially when the weather is so good. But again, as I said, the, the guidelines from the government and from the health department has to be at the forefront. Um, in our region, uh, especially in Hamilton District League, it's, uh, it's a very big area. Uh, uh, geographically, so we have uh, got some good news in sense that uh, uh, Niagara regions and Hamilton, um, the mountain area, the city of Hamilton has, uh, they are the part of uh, that phase two where at least 10 people are minimized practice, uh, practicing social distancing. So as a league, we are looking at some opportunities to open up uh, maybe uh, like a double wicket tournament or of organized practice first and foremost of the um, players because they all have family they all have lives that is more important than cricket uh, but we will uh, follow the guidelines of everyone okay. uh, especially i just want to thank uh, terry for, for being a leader in coming out and organizing those safe guidelines. They'll be a little bit tweaked based on the region. So we'll be doing the same thing uh, based on uh, res uh, respective municipalities coming out and asking for some additional uh, requirements. So yeah, I'm optimistic. Definitely, uh, I, I, I hope uh, come middle of July or August, we'll have some cricket. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before I go to ma um, Mr. Sharma, uh, welcome Zahur Bhatt. Zahur Bhatt, president of uh, Miss Saga Cricket League. Uh, look good in the beard. Thank you. <laughs> right. So, uh, Mr. Sharma, how things are in Ottawa? Uh, first so, of all, welcome um, to the program. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me at the program and on behalf of the Ottawa Valley Cricket Council. So, Ottawa is in a better position, I guess. Um, with the stage two lifting, right, there, there is a lot of relaxation which is coming up. So at least we can start our practices. Um, we have been in constant touch with City. So City has been quite vocal about what all things which we need to do um, in accordance to what exactly the Ontario and the Cricket Canada kind of governs. But we are working with them, making sure based on the health officials, guidelines, um, and the things what we need to follow, we make sure we implement that. Um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we can start practicing. Um, and then we are trying to figure it out our innovative ways where we can have six aside tournaments or stuff like that, where, where, where we are engaged, um, as well as we are making sure that the safety of our, uh, uh, of our players, of our empires and the people who are watching the game is our prime consideration. So the, I think we always, the most common topic is the mass, uh, the hand sanitizers, making sure that there is two meters in distance among the players, uh, huddles and so on and so forth. So we are working on that plan. Um, the the only consideration from city is that that plan needs to be reviewed by them before they can allow us to enter onto the grounds. So that's that's the conversation which is going on right now. Hi, thank you, Mr. Sharma. Zahoor, uh, before I go to Zahoor, I want to uh, welcome Mr. Harold uh, from Southwestern uh, Ontario Cricket League. Welcome to the program. Okay, your mic My is off. Harold, your mic is off. You can unmute it. Some problem. So, Zahur, how things are looking for Miss Saga Gregory League? Well, um, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Farooq, for hosting this show and the Cricket Ontario for uh, bringing everyone together once again in the second episode. I uh, really appreciate that because uh, the, uh, the more education we spread across uh, Ontario, the more, uh, the much better. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, as far as the city of uh, Mississauga is concerned, uh, we are um, also a little bit fortunate, uh, but uh, 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 but everything is in the air at the same time. For example, um, the cricket fields are being developed. Everything is uh, being maintained. Uh, we had a meeting with city of Mississauga uh, this morning 
about uh, what assistance they can provide us when we return to play uh, anytime soon. So the good news uh, they shared with us that uh, the uh, permits they have sh uh, issued us from the July 4th are still intact. They are not canceling it because they are ready, uh, depending uh, you know uh, what uh, information comes across from the uh, government health officials. And they mentioned that uh, they are heavily, uh, depending on uh, next week, uh, 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 Ontario meeting, July 17. And whatever the guidelines they receive, uh, they will uh, follow accordingly. So this is the good thing. And then the second thing is they will be extending the uh, the, uh, the season. For example, over season was ending like in in, in the uh, September 20th or sometime. But now they will be extending until the weather permits. So that's another good news from there. And um, uh, in, in, on, if I talk about uh, return to play guidelines. We are following uh, Cricket Ontario's guidelines that have been provided to us and it's being developed uh, on a regular basis. And uh, MCL is also preparing the similar guidelines that will dictate our membership uh, and, and how to follow all those things. And there are some rules in place. We are having a uh, meeting with our uh, internal departments to have uh, conduct a meeting as well with them after uh, June 17 news that we will be hearing uh, from the provincial level and the, from the city level. And then we can update our members accordingly, like what's the plan uh, in place. For our side, we are making sure that we are ready as everybody else uh, is uh, making sure because the, once the news is out, like for example, uh, 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 Ontario has, uh, is opening um, uh, a restriction from five people to 10 people from tomorrow. So it is going to be like that, right? So we want to make sure we are ready uh, as soon as it's there and we are preparing our um, schedule accordingly. And we want to make sure that once the news is out, we will be ready to uh, apply. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, we'll go to Mr. Harold Green, the Vice President of uh, Southwestern Ontario Cricket League. Mr. Green, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Thank you for having me on. Reed, how uh, was the situation at uh, your end around the area? Um, pretty much the same as with everybody. So we've had a meeting and we discussed maybe a July start or August start. We've been in touch with the, um, we're, we're basically in Windsor, Chatham and Limington. So we've been in touch with um, Windsor. That's the main, the main place with uh, most of our teams. And um, they've told us that we're just going to have to wait on wait on provincial clearance to to start, um, you know, to start planning for the season. We've sent them Cricket Ontario guidelines as as a way of letting them know we're very serious about starting and being safe in our um, in our start. I've also actually we've also sent the, the guidelines, the Cricket Ontario safety guidelines, to Limington. So. Two um, cities have been um, given the guidelines. We have to send them now to to Chatham. Um, as far as the cricket is concerned, once we're given clearance, depending on how long we of a season we have, we've decided we'll go perhaps with a thirty over season or maybe a twenty over season. But we're working on it. We're planning to have a season if we're given clearance to have a season. Okay, great. Thank you. And we'll also welcome uh, Shiv Prashad, the president of uh, Scarborough Cricket Association. Shiv, welcome to the program and, uh, and anything new on your side. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Uh, you hear me clearly, by the way? Yes, yes you're good. <laughs> okay, awesome, man. Uh, so perfect, uh, Farooq. Thanks for hosting us this evening. And I uh, want to give special thanks to Cricket Ontario for inviting us to the program. So far, we've been in contact with the City of Toronto Permit Office and what we've been told and advised to do is to follow the media, uh, especially the Ministry of Health and see what their guidelines are and uh, in perspective the dates that we may, we may be open. So we're very hopeful at this time, we may be having some cricket, uh, potentially a July, August start. We're ready at any time that is given for short notice. We're ready to, uh, to start our season. We have our schedule is being modified as, as we go on to facilitate it. Currently we're focused on uh, at least be able to play many, as many games as possible when it starts. So we are looking at the perspective of having a, a minimum overs in terms of 30 overs or 20 over to play maximum games 
permitted during the time allowed. Okay, great, Shiva. Thank you very much. We have lots of uh, questions are coming. I will take the first question uh, is uh, from Mr. Ashisha. And he's asking, like, are empires are going to be responsible for enforcing the guidelines on and off the field regarding COVID measures? So if so, this is the basic question. I also got this question a couple of times. Like, who will be basically responsible to you know um, being the cricket place at the ground? That's a great question, uh, Farooq. Uh, so far, we've worked with Cricket Ontario and Prem and Shah done a lot of work in putting all the studies and having this, the safe return guidelines there. Uh, the umpire does have a key role in play. However, what we, what is being requested by all of the leagues is for their presidents to sign a waiver to ensure that there's safe participation and resumption of games. And it is up to each league now to enforce that on a club basis to ensure that the captains on the, on the day are responsible for ensuring that their teams have the right players or the, if they have any illness to be aware of that and the umpires are there to enforce in terms of making sure that they're following the guidelines. If they're not following the guidelines, then there are repercussions that they may have to uh, have penalties involved in the game. For, for Rook Boy, I may, I may also throw something on that. Um, when, yeah, you look, when you look at the guidelines, every one of the member league will notice that we focused heavily on match day guidelines, meaning to address the safety and health concerns on the actual day that you're playing the game. And the guidelines are divide, divided into the following sections. Guidelines for off-field, guidelines for the teams that are on the field, and guidelines for the umpire. As you know, the umpire is already the adjudicator of the game and has all the responsibilities with respect to the rules of the game. Governance with, with respect to the COVID guidelines for the umpires will be shouldered not only by the umpire, but we are asking that these guidelines be also shouldered by the ex respective captains and vice captains on those days. And they, all of the guidelines are divided into categories of sanctioning like social distancing, ball sanitization, uh, and all these or, or water distribution. All of these has very specific recommendations for punitive measures if those different categories of guidelines are are, are, um, are not followed. So it's not only coming on the umpire to adjudicate these guidelines, but it's also a responsibility of the captains and vice captains of each team on that given day of play. Okay, uh, great. Uh, and I'll try to bring Farhan and I think we're having some issues connecting. Oh, okay, Farhan yeah, is here. There. Great, Farhan, finally we got you. Hey guys, sorry, hey. I'm having some technical issues, but I'm back. Can no you hear problem. Me? Uh, there is a question. There is, yes, I can hear you. There is a question for you. So it's about time you just joined. So, Sam Farnby, how are you going to restrictions and how many individuals are allowed at the ground per game after this reduced risk of infection? You or anybody can answer this. Walaikum well, okay. as uh, I'll take a stab at it and then somebody else who wants to pitch in. Um, uh, for them, this is all driven by the, the government. And I would urge, I would take this opportunity to urge every single one of us as cricket, responsible cricket players to, to pay heed to whatever the premier and the government is directing. So as of now, for example, there's a limit of five people as far as GTA is concerned. Um, if your question is about the future, we, we do not know. The limit opens up to 10 tomorrow, as I understand it, which still means that on, at, on the field you can have 10, but then there is the other restriction of whether we have the permission to play on the field, as Prem talked about earlier. The parks are not open to play per se. Yes, you can have 10 people. So until clear directions come out, my suggestion and urge to all of you out there is to be responsible and uh, you know, uh, make sure that we play by the rules set out by the government because they are up for our safety and for the safety of all around us. Um, last part of your question about uh, how can we um, address the uh, uh, the you know the scope of infection? I think this is exactly what the measures are for, and we must pay heed to them um, after the game, um, before the game, and uh, during the game. The guidelines are there from by, by Cricket Ontario, so it's in our best interest to pay heed to them and make sure we follow them. 
that's all from me. Uh, anybody else wants to pitch in, please go ahead. I think the question was about spectators. Am I right? Was it? No, I think the question is about when the cricket started. How many people, you know, with the team? You know, basically, I think this question came on the last program too. That so, eleven are the players from each side, right? So it's going to be either fifteen players going to be allowed, all full fifteen, or is that's the question was the last time too. So that's well, what I my think, understanding is. Yeah, let me take a jab at it. I think um, this question uh, relates to the uh, playing conditions of the uh, the league. I think by the rules. Uh, 11 player can participate in the game. Now, if somewhere the restriction is a sticks at the 10, that you can have a large gathering of 10 and no more than 10, then each league will adopt their, uh, that and uh, change their uh, playing condition to have that uh, 10 players uh, participation in there. So at this particular time, I think it's a question that we will probably be addressed a little bit later date when the actual in July, when the thing is started to get a little bit more relaxed. And there's a possibility that it will increase from 10 to 20, 20 maybe. So uh, I think uh, the question is good and valid, but I think everybody will make adjustment to that happen. To the question about the uh, about the guideline and the umpiring the person asked before, I just like to share that when we develop this guideline, a lot of work not only put by me, but by Prem and other committee member like Farhan and uh, and Shiv and Ranjit and and uh, Zahur. This is the group that Andy from the Ottawa, the Pavan. So this is the group that has developed that guideline and empire representation was also in there. So I think it's a thorough thing that we have considered everybody's into it and make sure that everybody is safe. We all have to do is that we have to follow the intervention. We have to follow the government guidelines for distancing. That is our best practice in order to avoid any infections. A great question. Um, there is a question, for, a quick question from Umar Sohail. Is like, uh, are you guys in touch with the government uh, for the cricket season? I think definitely you guys are. But there's any update from you guys, any of you? I think that is uh, my area because uh, from the from the professional government level, I think I attend most of the uh, most of the meeting and every meeting I've been preach about uh, creating a guideline and make a safety measurement. What it was happened. And then I think most of the leagues are attending the local uh, municipalities, uh, uh, cities uh, meetings. So they will, uh, they can update on the city level what the updates are. But government is doing their best to provide the, all the information that is needed to uh, make the guidelines and make people safe. Okay, great. There's, there is a lot of questions. Uh, there is a question for TND. And TND has a lot of questions. So, Mr. Shorab Bhardwaj, it's like in case of when the league gets a green light in July, the TDC is looking to reduce the number of over per game or complete match on the sing single day, Farhan Bhai, or any league. So, good, good question. And uh, Ranjit Bhai, feel free to pitch in. Um, the current mode is uh, we are going to have a shortened season, hopefully, which basically means that we are not going to affect the number of overs in a game, the game format is going to continue to be the same, except for the fact that we will have a shortened season. If we, if we, if we are able to uh, start in uh, the first week of July, essentially we'll have half of the season to go. And we'll, we'll do our best to accommodate as many games as possible, considering the circumstances. So at this point in summary, our plan is not to shorten the games, but shorten the season. Okay, thanks. Anybody have any uh, update on this? Uh, all leagues are on the same pattern you, for a shorter no. season? We are actually at the MCL level, we are considering both options at the moment. Because if we, because uh, this year we have received a lot of uh, membership registrations. So we are considering both. And uh, either we will reduce the, the number of hours or we reduce uh, the number of teams. And then, or we reduce the, uh, you know, the format. Uh, I mean, the number of games itself. So, number of games for sure, because then already we have lost two months. But we are considering the other two options at the moment and see how we can accommodate our uh, membership. So, Farid Kabria, uh, he's a continuation for his question. He's asking, is like the, he's talking about the number of people at the ground on players and spectator, like when the game starts. Do you guys have any calculation like 
even though like if you say like okay that 50 people can get it to the ground so then there's no issue but uh, do we have a number it's pretty hard to say that number is not being uh, identified by the government yet that what capacity each field will have so it's kind of very uh, difficult for us to uh, to say that we're going to allow 50 people or we're going to allow uh, uh, you know 20 people or 100 people because it's an open open park so park doesn't have a the park has its own limitation of the capacity but in the cricket field when we go down there we have two teams to play and they will play under the guidance of the uh, government restriction on what the uh, gathering means you know uh, at that point so perhaps later on we'll be more clear on this picture in this uh, gathering capacity at uh, city of busy saga level uh, for Rukpai, i can add on to that is um, i think there was a proposal and there is a consideration to have city staff members across all parts so uh, they will be wearing city uh, um, uniform or jerseys that to identify them they are city people and they will be visiting and making sure that um, uh, everybody is following the guidelines and if there's anything they can pitch in and they can uh, ask people not to do it or not to come in so further this brought a very good point by is uh, sorry to interrupt um just right, adding a little bit to it because tnd uh, also hosts fields games at the king city fields so we will also align ourselves with uh, prioritizing the safety uh, um, protocols as much as possible so to that end whatever the city regulations are applicable which is king city in this case town of king and on top of that, the provincial directors, last but not the least, we will ensure protocols starting from, uh, for example, hygienic conditions to um, people governing how many people uh, can play and so on and so forth. Uh, we will align ourselves essentially because, simply because the King City fields are privately administered. Okay, so there's so many questions. We're just going to go very quickly. Um, Javier Chuhan has a question. Is there any thought on reducing 50 overs to T35 or T20? Any of the leagues want to answer this? <clears throat> sure, Farouk. Uh, as I mentioned earlier before, our members have given us a feedback and where they would prefer uh, as many games as possible as opposed to the length of the games and the number of overs. So we are strongly considering having limited number of overs so we can have maximum games. However, that is all speculative until we know when the date is going to be for the reopening. So in regards to the spectators as well and the grounds, is that's all dependent on what the Ministry of Health tells us. Okay. Right. And in Ottawa, um, yeah, and in yeah. Ottawa, I guess we have been given the opportunity to the uh, teams as well to kind of um, pick and choose. We play three formats, 50 overs, 40 overs, and T20s. So the way we have done it is we're not forcing anyone, but whosoever is willing to play the format based on their comfort level. We are giving them that opportunity to do, uh, um, pick and select. Again, I think everyone has brought that up, that we are trying to have a shorter season, but not reduce the format of the games. Okay, great. There's a very interesting question coming up, and we'll see how we take this one. As we mentioned earlier, there's a ball sanitizing and infection guideline. How are we going to deal with this? Um, people are really curious about it. So one by one, and uh, Shaji, let me know if you want any of the other panelists to come into the panel. We can switch. I think I'll keep sending you the messages. I think uh, uh, Prem has missed. He would have. Uh, he has a 50 over league. He probably answer okay. some of the things on that. And as the sanitization sure. of the ball is concerned, it is against the uh, law of ball tampering, right? But uh, the each league can make their uh, uh, you know playing condition. To uh, to allow that sanitization to uh, for the balls to be uh, reused. So, but it's up to the league to uh, to take care of that part. Yeah. Um, yeah thanks, Shaji Farooq. Bhai. Um, the guideline is very specific in terms of everything that we're recommending with respect to the ball and the time for cleaning the ball and the handling of the ball and, uh, and using saliva or not, and the, the prohibition of saliva and sweat and all of that on the ball, it's all in the guideline. With respect to asking the questions about reducing formats, um, if we have T25 T and 50 over, we are doing exactly what uh, um, Farhan says. We are not gonna sacrifice the format in itself. We have done our schedules and if we start the second week in July, 
we will be able to manage to give both format 50% of their games with an extension of the season, which I'm sure the city will have absolutely no problem with, like uh, Farouk says, um, uh, Zahur said, we will be able to add additional games. Then we have, uh, we will probably have two lighted facilities coming up. And I've asked the city to dedicate those not to a new league this year, as we were intending to, a new format, sorry, of night, night league, but for usage by the, the, the two leagues in Brampton to catch up on their game. So if this thing starts July the 2nd, we might be able to provide our guys close to 75% uh, above that 50% with the lighted facilities by moving the T25 formats to the night. To the night. And uh, as long as the players accept that. So, yes, we're all, we are, we're all trying to, uh, in a short while, cramp as much cricket as possible. Now, if it doesn't open in July and it opens in August, we will uh, not have the regular competitive season, but we will arrange a shorter format that is pure for so that the members can experience playing cricket, but not with the, the usual competitive promotion, demotion, and all of that stuff. So we are waiting to see exactly the timing of when we will be allowed to go back onto the field. Zahur, anything on uh, reducing the number of overs or anything like that? I think um, me and Farhan Bai already answered this question that uh, we are uh, looking for more options. Um, uh, first uh, target is just give them uh, uh, the half of the season because we already lost two months. And then if uh, okay. people want more games, then we can reduce the hours and then put the games, more games on. So that's the strategy we are putting. So there is a question regarding relationship to on-field guidelines for six feet apart. How are we going to do it? The keeper and the slip fielder and all those things. How are we dealing with this situation? Again, I think these guys can get the answers to those questions by going onto the Cricket Ontario website, by going on their respective league's website, because we have posted these guidelines and it actually addresses the distancing between the placement of fielders, especially in the slip cordon and, and, and closer mm -hmm. to the back in front. It also addresses the space that has to be maintained between the keeper and the batter and, and in, in terms of coming up to the stump or going back behind the stump. So those are guidelines that are specifically addressed within the on-field guidelines of play. So I will encourage everyone that's asking the question that it's time that they start now taking advantage and going onto their respective league website and Cricket Ontario website, as Shaji has mentioned. These documents are there. It's there for not only for the, the league administrators, but for the players as well. So they need to do some self-education uh, on, on these guidelines and principles that they will have to adopt and try and, and conform to. Great. Uh, can uh, uh, I can uh, just add a little bit to, to this uh, question? Because um, sure. um, I, I don't blame my um, the questions because we are here to answer them. And um, usually the guideline is really big. And uh, as you know, like people don't really bother to uh, to read it. And uh, that's what uh, Prem is uh, getting at. But uh, what we are doing is we are preparing a cheat sheet to to you know to the points all those things that are uh, there to conduct the game so that people just peek and take a peek on it and then make sure that it is there so yes the answer is yes the wicket keeper has to be staying apart from the six uh, uh, feet uh, and then that's how we are going to um, adopt it okay so next question is pretty interesting is like and i would like to have that answer from uh, ranjit bai and mr green is uh, if the season starts in July anytime soon or something like that, you will be have games on your weekend or there is any possibility to will have some squeeze game between the weekdays or weeknights? Well, uh, Farak, first of all, I'm just going to go back to the previous discussion. Sure. Uh, at the end of the sure, at please. the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, we all are aware we practice these social distancing at our homes, at our workplaces, or doing groceries, or doing anything that we do outside today in the current circumstances. So, I mean, it would be just an extension of that when you're playing cricket. You just need to use the common sense and use that same thing that you're following today. So, nothing different. 
I know cricket is a little different. It's, it's a sporting event and all that. You get excited uh, and all that. But you still, these are different circumstances. The guidelines are there. But who is, has to enforce it? The player themselves. So that's yeah. all I just wanted to say on that part. Uh, on, on this question, definitely, uh, if, if players, if there's a, uh, enough interest, I'm sure the cities will be willing to extend the permit. We all have permits for practices on the weekdays. So if, if there's a possibility and there's a, enough interest, then yes, we can arrange that as well. I, I'm sure every league can look into that. Uh, and also from Hamilton District League perspective, uh, our aim, and I, I, am, I'm, I think I'm speaking on behalf of everyone here, is that our aim as administrator of the leagues or in, in the province of Ontario is to make sure that whatever little uh, time we get to enjoy our game, we extend in a way that everyone can enjoy that uh, that period. That's all it is. Whatever format. Uh, the length of the game and hours, uh, weekdays, week, uh, weekends, we all will work and, and try to make sure that everyone get a piece of whatever little time we get during this uh, this summer. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, Mr. Green, anything from your side, sir? Yes. Um, in terms of um, weekday play, there's that possibility because we have um, access to Jackson Park Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. So one possibility is to play T30 matches um, weekends and then do T20s um, Tuesday and Thursday evenings. So that, that's a possibility in, um, in our league, Swoko. But I also wanted to go back to the, the safety issue. I think if people go sure, through yeah. the, um, the guidelines, so the, the Cricket Ontario guidelines are very comprehensive, very useful for everybody, I think, to read. And from our point of view, I think the most difficult part, because we have a lot of students and a lot of, well, a lot of young guys playing in our league, the most difficult part would be the no sharing of personal cricket equipment because a lot of times the teams have... The, um, the equipment and, you know, we use the equipment for all the guys. So this would be something that would be a challenge for us, but it's something that the league will have to face and sort of come up with some, some way of making sure that we can play with guys having perhaps their own equipment, maybe subsidizing equipment somehow. But that's, that's the only challenging thing I see here. Everything else I think is sort of reasonable and pretty clear to understand what's going on. <coughs> And anything from the Ottawa Valley? What's your take on this? Um, I guess, I guess it was rightly nailed because that's the challenge. I think we are also kind of facing through how to implement to make sure that the gloves, the helmet, uh, and some of the equipment is not shared. Um, so our idea is to make sure that in the guidelines we we ask our people or our teams to ensure that they have enough equipment that that's not shared and it's individually used. Um, right. But as far as um, uh, the weekdays are concerned, we generally do practices on weekends. So we have never implemented a strategy to 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 play games on weekdays. Um, but that's something to consider for sure. Right. If you're short in the season and there are many more teams and players who are looking to play, that's something which we can always uh, work with City. Yeah. Good. Thank, thank you very much. Shiva? Yes, for Shiva, my, uh, no, no problem. <laughs> We've actually been playing T20 games in the evenings. Uh, we played our junior games in the evening as well. So that is something we are definitely looking at in terms of extending our season and having as many games as possible. Okay. Thank you. There is an interesting question. I don't know how, uh, is it a serious question or not, but I'll just bring it up. If we are using a, are we using a wipe to clean the ball? And then asking then the empire can have a box of Lysol or no? So. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, please. <laughs> this, is something that, um, this is something that each league has to determine because it falls into the ball tampering area uh, of the rules. So uh, their rules have to be modified and uh, and the playing condition have to be updated. So if leagues feel that uh, this uh, change can be uh, adopted, then yes. If it's not, then there will be some other alternates to uh, make sure, uh, like other uh, people, you know, uh, Options, right? 
there will be no wipe. So it's just uh, uh, nothing. Maybe the ball will be uh, wiped with a towel or something. But uh, it has to be making changes into the law. Um, the, uh, can I can I chip in here? Um, the, the guidelines sure, sure. the guidelines with that is is in is specified in the guidelines. But from a league perspective, in a, you're coming to a game, you know your five or six bowlers. Those five or six bowlers should walk with their own personalized uh, uh, cloth to wipe the the balls because. When they're finished, the ball can be sanitized at the beginning and the end of each over. So it spells it out in the guidelines as to, as far as comprehensively as far as we could think. And then as the, as um, was just answered, the leagues have got to start coming up with their own byline, uh, guidelines, which I'm sure everyone will, uh, based on how how how, we, how it's executing the game in, in their respective jurisdiction and how they handle all of that. The same thing goes for spectators. And, and, and how many and from that respect we had asked the city for an additional help as you know these days cricket grounds may have two bleachers or may not have none or some picnic tables one of our demands on our request from our city for help in addition to sanitizers and all that stuff is so if they can put more seating at the cricket facilities to enable more people to be there and keep social distancing and keep the five people together etc so that you can have more people watching your game. So if we can, if how are you going to sanitize the the ball like after every over? Are you going to put a sanitizer on it, or how how are you going to do it? Um, you Signed can buy anybody. Okay. Yeah, for by what I've heard so far is, uh, I've I mean in my daily conversations haven't been very fine as yet. I'm hearing that one of the guidelines coming out is for players to wear uh, these disposable gloves to play cricket. Uh, not sure how much that's going to be materialized. The challenge is for for the leagues is the financial costs associated with the, with these type of things, like in terms of uh, equipments, as mentioned before. Uh, if there's any sanitizer in this work, sanitizers for players to uh, clean their hands. So all of these are, are things that's additional costs for our members and for the league. So we, this is something we have to figure out as well as we go forward. In addition to that, in terms of practicing physical deals, this is thing while we were at the games at the scarborough games we also have soccer fields that are nearby so at any given time there's soccer being played and then there's cricket being played as well so there's a larger number of people being played and there's two different leagues so that is something we have we're in discussion with the leagues as well the city of toronto as well as to how are we going to be looking that looking after that as we go forward uh because I got uh, quite a few questions in the last program too. Is like if you putting any kind of sanitizing, trying to sanitize the ball, it's going to change the condition of the ball. Exactly. Are we talking about two balls? No. Two balls yep. from in the game, it'll be more cost, right? And is any fast bowler in the panel? Because if you <laughs> change any condition, it'll going to help fast bowlers. For so, yeah. any, any fast bowlers? For Rubai, I think you answered the question. You cannot. You cannot use sanitizer on the ball because you will be tampering the condition of the ball the same thing you cannot use saliva or sweat anymore on the ball so you have to keep the ball in its purest form as possible and that is why i said each bowler will have to walk with their own cloth that you can wipe and the umpire can have a, a, a neutral one that will clean the ball before he hands it to the next one but you cannot use sanitizer on the ball you can use saliva on the ball you can use sweat on the ball so there's only so much you can do. And ICC has not even put out anything about using sanitizer to clean the ball. You can't because you are now interfering with the ball. You're, you're tampering with it. So you can do that, right? So the so thing you're is... saying uh, you will sanitize the ball, we're not sure how we're going to do it. No, you can sanitize your hand. You clean your hands, etc. before you go to bowl and, and, and as it comes around. But you cannot use sanitizer on the ball, right? You won't get that from an ICC or even an, any national uh, governing body, right? So follow the guidelines as much as we can to protect the health and safety, but we can't just go overboard. Right? All right, so we have a question from Pankaj Gupta, uh, Messiah Ramblers. Uh, what is the take on the youth games? Parents will not be okay, especially when the parents bring three or four kids. How are you going to deal with this situation? Anyone, any... I think yeah. I can uh, speak on behalf of the uh, through, uh, Cricket Ontario, but I think the uh, there are two leagues here who runs the uh, maybe three leagues three. who are running the uh, 
a youth program, TDCA and Scarborough and uh, and the Mississauga Premier Cricket League. So they may be saying what their programs are in order to do the youth uh, programming from Cricket Ontario perspective. All our program is uh, is on uh, a suspension mode. At this point, we will see what the uh, what the timeline is available. Uh, however, we have prepared that we will may, we may conduct a couple of regional tournaments for the youth to give some opportunity to how this is going to play out. We don't know because we will be mercy of uh, uh, senior leagues to uh, provide the the time for us during the weekdays. So our we if everything goes well in July. I think there will be a youth program from Cricket Ontario to run the regional tournaments. And same will apply for the women's and the, and the senior, depending on the evening times available from the uh, uh, senior group. But I will give a floor to the TDCA and uh, Scarborough and, uh, and Mississauga uh, MCL to comment on that for their league, but they have a program. Yes. Yes. I think Prahan Bhai first because uh, they are running uh, Prahan Bhai? union. Uh, no, thank you. I think Shaji has uh, kind of covered it. Uh, the only thing I'll add uh, is that uh, um, essentially the youth will be more at risk and not only because, of course, they're youth, but also because typically there are very supporting parents and uh, the general demographics out there suggest that there's a lot of carpooling, there's a lot of... Uh, you have to pick up the kids and the parents help, the coaches help, uh, God bless them all. But the point is that the isolation and the containment factor and the safety regulations will go out of the door right off uh, because of the situation and the constraints the parents and the youth player, unfortunately, have to go through. So by design, I, I, this um, we will not be able to follow the guidelines and also offer the games. By that uh, dimension alone, unfortunately, um, it doesn't seem quite practical to be, I hate to say it, but that's the reality that it doesn't seem quite practical that uh, we will have youth games. Uh, but Shaji has, has already mentioned uh, that we will try our best to give, as soon as you know things solidify and uh, the safety conditions are prevailing a little more, uh, we have more people, not 10, limited to 10, but say, for example, limited to more than that. And parents get comfortable sure. because, of course, the safety of the children is at most. Um, we will try to award or arrange some games towards the end of the season as much. We, I know we all want to play and we want to give uh, want to give games to the youth, but this is where we stand as of today. Yeah, so from, Shiva? Oh, yeah. Cool. Sure. Or Zahur, anybody? No, yes, sir. Uh, yes, for by I mean, this is very some. This is very sensitive to us because all the decisions we, we will be making is based on the safety of the children, uh, safety of our participants. It, that is the most important thing in our minds. And as we get guidance from the Ministry of Health and how we should handle these matters, that is how we able to determine what we go forward. As of right now, we know it is a challenge because a parent may bring three or four children from a different household, so we, don't, we want to make sure that they're safe and especially. If you're entrusting your children to go play cricket, we want you to feel a peace of mind knowing that they'll be well taken care of, they're in safety. So if we at any time feel that there's any, any doubt whatsoever that the parents are not going to be feeling secure or the children be at risk, we'll definitely be against playing any youth cricket this year. Uh, we do hope, though, however, that we can make something happen possibly. Uh, so we will be waiting on the guidelines to see especially what's required for us to have the youth games. So right. in our case, in our case, uh, we also had a uh, sketch plan for a uh, youth league uh, this year, but uh, due to the loss of time, what we are planning is uh, we will have at least uh, some sort of training and coaching conducted for all those kids uh, separately, um, you know, following all the guidelines. And then if uh, uh, time permits, we'll have uh, at least one weekend uh, tournament for them uh, so that they, they all can enjoy the game. Uh, uh, Bhai, I just want to share that the uh, uh, Cricket in Ontario definitely has a plan to have uh, some activities for the children pending on the uh, uh, relaxation on the restrictions because then those programs will usually will happen during the weekdays from morning 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock because after 4 o'clock all the senior will probably take the grounds to play their uh, 
their games at that time time frame. We definitely will have something if the restrictions are relaxed. Second question I saw from Pankaj was about the uh, signing of the waivers. So for the viewer, viewers and the uh, and the league already knows for the viewers and audience that were watching this, this program, uh, please visit the uh, cricketontario.ca uh, website. There is the uh, button there for COVID-19 info. We have the waiver forms there. So if it's needed, we are going to ask people who are uh, who need to sign the waiver forms to make sure the safety first, you know, come uh, before the playing uh, starts, safety first, and those waiver forms will be required to sign by everybody. To give everybody peace of mind that whoever is participating is uh, is safe. Great. Uh, Akil Khan, very quickly, if somebody wants to take a very, uh, like a short answer, um, is there like if, what are, what are the teams like? We we just talking on the positive things right now, but just in case if the team does not feel comfortable uh, by the situation or by the other team, how do you guys want to handle this? I think you got to bring uh, in uh, Prem. Okay, Farouk, I can I yeah, I just wanted to say yeah, yeah, again can, at yeah. the end of the day. Farukway, I just wanted to say that to the end of the day, it's the choice that we make as a team, as a sure. player, or as individual. We have to first and foremost look at the, say, our own safety, safety of others. Uh, so given that, if someone doesn't feel comfortable, I mean, we have... I, I, we our lost team can you. refuse okay, to play. Sure. Yeah, I, like what I, what I'm saying is like we we have to come up with that scenario where like if team refuses to play because of whatever a reason, but uh, with given the guidelines and Shaji just also mentioned that we have the undertaking, we also have a disclosure before this game. Uh, um, uh, you know, everyone is uh, taking the undertaking, disclosing that nobody uh, uh, doesn't have any COVID-related or kind of sy symptoms. And we're also even thinking of uh, exploring the idea of even have uh, you know, self-monitored temperature, uh, body temperature listed on those undertaking. And that would become like umpire have to take that. And anyone we suspect or uh, we will have this already in the playing condition that we will uh, respectfully ask that individual player to not participate, just even if it is borderline, just for the safety of everyone else. So I think, again, at the end of the day, it is, uh, it is what it is. Uh, we have to make their, our own choices. The teams have to make their own choices. Safety first, as we all say that. Great. So we are already on the 58th minute of our live transmission and the questions are pouring in. I don't know. It's just up to you guys how how uh, how long you guys want to go ahead. Should we take just a couple of more questions or we just yeah. ended up at one hour? Or it's up to you guys. So definitely, I think it is important that we uh, address the uh, people concerned. This is why this program is for. So uh, uh, I have no issues with the... Uh, with the addressing the question people are asking. Okay, so the Balaj Patel has a question. I'm happy to stay on as well, Farooq. Okay, so there's any any um, there's any additional time added to the normal playing time to accommodate all these things, you know, sanitize the ball, stay away, and all those things. Well, that's a good that's a good question. Again, this is up to the uh, league to uh, make the adjustment into the. Uh, um, into the um, uh, playing condition, it is it is a challenge for the umpires as well as the uh, the league to make sure that the timeline is given, uh, the game finishes in that particular time. But from being an, an umpire and also the administrator, I think it's a challenge that we have to manage. It's a lot of game management skill will be involved in here how to manage the game. Mm -hmm. Adding on to that, uh, Bijal Bhai himself is a very senior administrator and umpire. Um, eventually, I think we'll have to be adaptable and flexible. So Bijal Bhai, at some point in time, we will come back to the Umpires Association to see how this unprecedented situation can be best dealt with in order to facilitate the game, um, as opposed to penalizing, rather facilitating the game 
But I think the point I'm trying to make is that we will have to be flexible and adaptable with the intent to right. make the game happen. Right. And I think only the challenge is going to come where where the grounds are getting shared in between two leagues, could be the soccer league and the cricket league. So one ends, one starts, right? So And, and before and after. So those things need to be taken into consideration. But in Ottawa, while well, we have a couple of grounds which are just dedicated to cricket, so that can be accommodated with City. So there's a question from Manpreet Dinsa. Is that could we ask each team? Is it? It's a good, uh, just a suggestion, right? To or is it just gonna be a pre-check before the game, or does it just depend on the team or player or individually? How are you gonna handle this? If somebody is coming and are we gonna be a uh, empire police to check their temperature or they just their own? How we'll deal with this situation? The first way, as I mentioned, I think uh, first and foremost, it's everyone's responsibility to not participate and do not risk other people if if they are they have symptoms, right? So, uh, to Manpreet's question, I think the first and foremost, if the players can, and that's our intention too, on the on the declaration that they will declare uh, that they are not, uh, they don't have any symptoms, and if they can monitor their own temperature prior to the game that's even better i think that that shows that how responsible the cricket community can be great anybody else want to take this one i think that's a that's a great point which 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 leagues can implement but in ottawa uh, when we have been talking to city i think there is a recommendation that if possible, we can get all our playing members before the start of the league to get it tested through our test centers. Um, so we are trying to figure it out, how is that possible and, and, and what onus we can give it to the leagues and to the team um, in order to ensure we can execute that smoothly. But I think this is a great question as well, where rec recording of temperature could happen for the players before they start the game. So there's one question, like, you know, there's the the... We have a lot, I think we have more than 100 fields just in GTA area. And some fields are like uh, small, like, you know, the short ground boundaries and they have like mud uh, puddles or something like that. So if the ball goes there, what are you going to do? How we, are we just a cleaning process or? I think uh, it's a repetitive question. Uh, uh, as uh, uh, Prem also answered this as well, that uh, we are uh, trying to sanitize our hands. The players will sanitize themselves. Uh, the ball, they will okay. be using it, right? So True. just to avoid any temp temporary. So Ashisha is asking, will be enough time and gap between the the two grounds, uh, two games? Because we, I think we talked about when we talked about the, with the Cricket Canada, like, you know, the one team or the match has to be totally amended in the ground before the second one come. Is going to be in a scheduling issue or how you guys will deal this? Well, if I talk about MCL, uh, we always have uh, some extra time uh, bank for a normal game, for game loss or for, uh, for any other uh, matters. So we have extra times, but unfortunately, time is a time, and that day you only can have 24 hours. So in that particular time, um, officials have to take decision uh, based on their judgment, and then everybody had to follow. Great. I think this is this is pretty much what the questions we have. Is there any anything you guys want to add to this one or any point we are missing? And I'll bring back a couple of people who can. Uh, is anything? Yeah, uh, uh, Faruk. Yeah, Faruk. Bhai, uh, I just first of all uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity and uh, Cricket Ontario for taking the leadership role and and bringing everyone together and uh, and and. and Keeping in contact with the cricket community, that's great. And and you doing a wonderful job of getting all us, all of us at the one place uh, to take these questions and also share what uh, what people are really looking for. Uh, again, at the end of the day, my only request to all cricketers, it doesn't matter what league, recreational, professional, competitive, non-competitive, that please follow the guidelines. Do not use the parks if they are not open. Do not abuse. We as cricket community look really, really bad if we do that. Let's wait. I know it's frustrating. Let's wait for the opening. We are working with the uh, local authorities. 
as soon as it's open, we will be the first one to uh, to organize cricket. So uh, stay stay patient and and uh, obey all the rules. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv Bhai. Um, Mr. Um, Sharma. Um, so I think only thing which which I would like to say is our effort is to ensure that we all are safe and we enjoy it the game we all love right um i know it comes to the cost but but our our cricket teams and fraternities all we are trying to say is, is stay calm things are coming things are opening up and i think all we need to do is just get together take individual responsibilities and ensure that we all are safe um and we can we can have this game some season this this year okay great thank you rahul uh, uh, in closing remarks, I would also uh, echo the same thing, uh, like my colleague said, um, uh, be uh, mature, you know, um, you have to take care of yourself and the others as well. So don't pretend that you're not sick and you just want to play. If you are sick, please uh, take, uh, think about others and, and yourself as well. So make sure you are fit to play and, and then uh, uh, come and play and don't just uh, rely on captains. We don't want to blame captains because captain did not check. Uh, so it's individual's responsibility. So make sure, please, everybody is mature. It's a mature game. And think about others, you know, uh, just help each other. And then uh, cricket will be there forever if you live. So make sure you take care of yourself. And then, uh, you know, uh, everything will be normal. Right. Thanks, Sahur. Uh, Mr. Green, what's your Closing remarks. Um, well, I hope we can all take this issue very seriously. Safety first. We hope we can return safely back to the cricket. And I wish all the other leagues best wishes. Hi, thank you. Shiv? Uh, thanks, Farouk. Uh, really appreciate you taking the initiative to have us all together in the same forum, answering all these important questions. Uh, I appreciate Shah and Cricket Ontario reaching out to us to have us participating. I think it's very important at this time that we all stand united. The message is uh, together as one and all cricket fraternity, all, I mean, each and every one of us, regardless of all what we do in our lives, we're all part of this. So it's, it's at the end of the day, it comes down to us being personal responsibility. We take responsibility for our own actions. Uh, it's very encouraging for everyone to get tested. At least you have the peace of mind. Should you have to have the opportunity to go back and play cricket? You do not put your, your fellow players and colleagues at risk. Uh, it is frustrating waiting for cricket. Just keep in mind that we're all in it together. As soon as it is safe and uh, we are, we receive all guidelines and the opportunity to play back, we will be. Want, we all want to play cricket and want to have cricket. However, we, we do hope that you practice all the precautions necessary. Continue to wash your hands and and stay safe. And if you are in doubt, get tested. And I mean, the last thing at least. Just make us be proud. Uh, each and every one of us have a part of playing cricket. Just abide by all the rules which you hear in the media from the province of Ontario and from the cities regarding the facilities. Uh, please do not gather. If you are within the 10 players, please practice physical distancing and ensure that you put your safety and those of others first. Because from each and every household, you may think you're fine. However, you go home to your parents, your children, your spouses, and your grandparents and so forth. So. When you, when you make a decision, it impacts so many other lives. So please take that in perspective as you go about your daily activities. Thank you so much for Bye and uh, my fellow colleagues. Our pleasure. Thank you very much. Farhan Bhai. Thank you, Farooq Bhai, for having us. I think uh, it, the topic has been well covered. Let's just be responsible and let's just be safe. Uh, the only thing I'd add is, um, violation or disregard for all of these laws and safety measures is only going to delay the game. So please don't be hasty, please be safe, and do not cause any further delays because of your disregard. That's all I will say. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Farhan Bhai. Uh, Prem? Um, Farhan Bhai, again, thanks for having us and getting all of our Cricket Ontario members together and have this second show. Um, from the nature of the questions, you can see uh, cricketers are accustomed to going there and depend on their captain and the umpires and then protest against the decisions. This is a serious, serious case. 
uh, uh, my colleagues have wrapped this up pretty good. And I would emphasize that Cricket Ontario took the time to construct all these guidelines for you to return to play cricket. Uh, ownership is not only on us. It's not only on your captain. As some of the boys have said, it's on you, the player. You know, ignorance of the rules of cricket, they're going to the ground as a cricketer and play, okay. Ignorance of the guidelines that we're trying to give you to help to protect your safety and health is not okay. Because going to the ground and not having observed any of them or declaring to the captain that you're not sick, again, it comes to the league because when the captain signs off for you that all his uh, 11, playing 11 is ready and free of any, any sickness or any symptoms and they go on the field, there are infractions because if one of you is then discovered to be sick, your team will be penalized and you can face the repercussions of such an action, which could be ejection of a player or ejection of the team or suspension of the captains. So as players, everyone listening and everyone who will be are eager to go back and return to play cricket, as all of we on, and we're all as administrators trying to make certain we do the best that we can do. Um, to, to give you as many games as we can, we can lengthen the time of the game. You have to play within the restrictions of your league and their, and their schedules and, the, and their, their, their playing bylaws. So uh, at, at any time, it's that it has not been more critical that the onus is on the players. It's on their shoulders that they respect the guidelines and be as honest as possible with themselves in terms of if they have any type of feelings that they are not fit to play on that given day. Right. And with that, thank you very much. And I sure. hope everybody goes to the Cricket Ontario and their respective league websites and print those bylaws, uh, guidelines, and try and become familiar with them so that if the event that we get a short notice that we're ready to play, your leagues will not have to worry about all of these other than making you aware of the guidelines, giving you their copies, and giving you their blessings to try to play the game according to the rules and regulations they will have in place. Thank you, Prem. And now I will go to the president of uh, Cricket Ontario, Mr. Shah Zafar. Uh, thank, thank you, Farooq uh, for the uh, opportunity. Uh, I think uh, my message to all the viewers, uh, including the players, umpires, officials, and volunteers, and the uh, and the spectator, that please consider the scene is not going to be norm. Right, and everyone has to be making some adjustment and must adopt the changes that we're going to go through. They have to be patient, put safety first, follow the guidelines for safety of players and safety of yourself and them as much as you can. I have a trust in my uh, uh, my uh, organization and uh, its members that they will do their best to provide the maximum playing opportunity to everyone in the safe environment, right? And once again, I'd like to thank the Sports Trend and for yourself for providing the opportunity to Curica Ontario and its member to provide the regional updates for everybody in the Ontario to the Cricket Fraternity. fraternity. And the last thing is that if for information and communication, please visit the Cricket Ontario website and Facebook. We are very active putting up the information as we get and the league website because local leagues will putting up information related to the local leagues area. So please all these websites and get the information you have. Anybody has any further question, you can write me up and I'll be make sure that I direct the, uh, I get the answer and direct you in the right direction. Thank you again for having us here today. Yep, thank you very much from uh, bottom of my heart uh, from sports and from all the viewers who are watching this program, uh, we have a marathon session for almost nine, uh, 75, uh, like 60 and 15, like 75 minutes we've been uh, live and there are a lot of questions, good questions, all questions are good. Um, one thing I learned tonight is all the administrators and all the league admins are really keen to bring the cricket back for everyone. You know, this is the love of the game and they are spending um, their own time and they're working really hard to bring, you know, all these guidelines and everything is just for the safety of the players and, and their loved ones is. So I really want to thank again to all the administrators from Cricket Ontario to the region and the leagues uh, and clubs. So thank you very much. Thank you know, 
individually uh, courtesy of Shah Zafar, we have bring the best and the top people on Cricket Ontario here to answer your questions. Um, with that, you know, as uh, you guys said, is uh, uh, please visit um, Cricket Ontario website, your your league website, your club website, and get the information and, and educate yourself. With that, we're gonna sign off and thank you very much. We will, if we need, we will be uh, doing another program soon and hopefully before the start of the season, we'll do another program. But if still you have any questions and you don't want to talk to your league or uh, the Cricket Ontario directly, you can send uh, a message to Sportsman and we will address this question. With that, uh, thank you very much again and hope everybody got their questions and uh, their answers and we will be Yes, um, so and we will be uh, conducting another session. So thank you very much, and with that, good night, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night, everyone. All the best. Night. All the best.